Okay, here we go. I served as a uh, so-called uh, expert reviewer of IPCC reports, so I've had a chance to watch them now since 1990. Five reports. Every six years, a new report. And I've noticed that every year, every report cites a different type of evidence for anthropogenic global warming. And that the evidence is different in every report, and they reject the re evidence they had in, the, in, the, in their last report. So I'll bring you up to date on these reports. First of all, you're all familiar, of course, with uh, the 20th century reported surface temperature. Uh, you will see here the reported uh, warming between, oops, between, uh, here we go, 1910 and 1940, then between 19, about 1978 and 1997. Uh, two warmings are reported. Notice that the, in the United States record, the second warming doesn't appear to be very prominent. And that is real. Uh, it turns out that the first warming in the early part of the 20th century is genuine, but not caused by human uh, emissions. The second warming is problematic. Nevertheless, in the first report of the IPCC, they take both warmings seriously, and they think it's, they're caused by carbon dioxide. And of course, they get a humongous climate sensitivity, and they predict, therefore, uh, a great increase in temperature with time. Let me take a quick look. Oops. Yeah. This shows the assessment report, 1990, 1996, 2001, 2007, 2013. Notice that the, uh, their estimate of AGW, of anthropogenic global warming, increases from 50% to 66% to more than 90% to more than 95%. And I'll show you that this increase in certainty goes hand in hand with the way in which the models disagree with observations. <laughs> this is very, very funny. And I've also cited here their uh, estimate uh, of uh, evidence. Uh, in the first report, they had a funny kind of statistical analysis which uh, made absolutely no sense. It didn't even make sense to the IPCC. They no longer use it. It was based on lagged autocorrelation, and somehow that was supposed to indicate a human effect on the climate. That was in their attribution chapter. In the second report, they no longer mention the autocorrelation. They now have a hotspot, which is manufactured. It doesn't exist. They made it up. They made it up by selecting data in a certain way that, that showed a warming. Overall, there was no warming, and that was demonstrated in a nice paper published in Nature by Pat Michaels and Chip Knappenberger. They discovered that, and it's now, IPCC no longer uses that as evidence. I want to show you quickly what this looked like. Uh, whoops. Yeah, here we are. This is the hotspot as shown by models. And this is the hotspot as shown by observations. It doesn't exist. <laughs> this is from an official government report of, 19, of 2006, so-called climate science report uh, published by the US government. And it clearly shows that there is no hotspot. So it doesn't exist. Now the IPCC has finally recognized this, and they no longer use it. It's been abolished. In their third report, therefore, they went to a new kind of evidence. They used the famous hockey stick. 
You don't know all about the hockey stick. It's based on poor data, bad statistical evidence, and actually some, well, some would say fraudulent activity. I will not go so far. Let me just say that it's based on poor uh, analysis, incomplete analysis. Uh, anyway, if you look carefully at the hockey stick, oops, I passed it, you'll see that it claims that the 20th century was the warmest in the last thousand years. Not true. The blue line, which is the reconstruction of proxy data, uh, stops here. And the blade of the hockey stick is based on published temperature data. Uh, the temperature data don't agree with the temperature data from satellites. And therefore, the temperature data used here are probably not valid and very su much suspect. These are the temperature data, the so-called warming between 1978 and 1997. The IPCC no longer uses the hockey stick. It, it, it indicates how, what they think of their own evidence after reflection, after other people have had a chance to criticize it. It's no longer in use. However, in their fourth report, the fifth report, they use a new kind of evidence, which is equally suspect. I'll try to describe it to you, because it is really, really, very strange. You've never seen anything like this before. It's a, it's a circular argument. And they don't seem to recognize that. They think it's a, a real evidence. So let's go back to this. Is, these are the satellite data. And as you can see, they show no warming between 1978 and 1997, completely flat. This is the El Nino. Then there's a, a jump. And then there's no warming in the last 15 years. Let me now show you what was done in the fourth IPCC report and in the fifth IPCC report. They tried to, they've now given up on the first part of the 20th century. That's no longer caused by. Uh, human activities. But they still maintain that the last part of the 20th century could be uh, human activities. And of course, they've reduced their climate sensitivity appropriately. They will have to reduce their climate sensitivity even further. It's now at about 2.5 degrees. I think it's probably about one-tenth of a degree. There's a factor of 25 less than what they published. Let me show you how this works. Yeah, here we are. You see, these are surface data. These are not satellite data. The surface data report a warming between 19, oops. I seem to be doing something wrong here. Well, let's try again. Here we are. The surface data show a, a indicate a, a warming between 1978 and 1997. The satellite data do not. Uh, they can try to simulate, and they do try to simulate the surface data by a model. You can always do that but by picking the right sensitivity, by picking the right number of aerosols, and you can adjust the climate model in particular ways to simulate what is observed. And then they subtract the increase in carbon dioxide. 
and arrive at what's called an unforced model, no forcing, no greenhouse forcing. And of course, the unforced model shows no rise because there's no increase in, in greenhouse gases anymore. And now they look at this gap between the unforced model and the forced models. And they say, this gap must be due to greenhouse gases, and therefore this proves, this proves that greenhouse gases are responsible for the rise. You can see that this is a circular argument and completely invalid. So now we are back again at uh, this famous graph that you've all seen several times. We now have the last 15 years of uh, no warming according to the satellite data and according to the surface data now. No warming, yet the models show a warming. And during all this time, the IPCC becomes ever more sure that humans are causing global warming. They are now at least 95% sure. I guess the next report will be 99% sure. Uh, they're never quite 100% sure because they know that that is not very scientific. So we are now at a stage where uh, we have a phony kind of evidence for uh, anthropogenic global warming. And I think finally it will be realized that this will not stand the test of scrutiny. And I think uh, the next IPCC report, if there is one, should be, be extremely interesting because according to what we've seen before, they will drop their previous reliance on evidence and have to come up with some kind of new evidence, whatever that is. So thank you very much for your attention.